So, hello, good afternoon, good morning, good evening, welcome, hello, Cosmos. Hi, hey, Ricardo, how are you? I'm fine. Staying uh, healthy? Are, yes. Excellent. What about you? Everything is fine Staying over healthy. there? As good as we can get, you know? Yeah. Sure. So, we are starting our um, first edition of the online debates um, that comes from a partnership between NACAC and Soccer Hub. So, on the next uh, three days, we'll be having here um, two debates per day for about 45 minutes to one hour. Um, on behalf of Soccer Hub, um, I would like to thank NACAC once again to, for trusting our services and trusting our, our way of doing things. Um, once again, uh, I believe that it's going to be very um, fruitful for everyone that is attending. This is a live event. So as you know, um, you will be able to ask questions just right on the chat box. Um, the question that you would like to be asked to one of our speakers and Cosmos that will be moderating this panel will do it. So um, before we start, I just want you to um, click on the like button if you can see me and hear me well. And also, please introduce some information about yourselves on the chat box, the country that you are based in and what kind of job do you have so we can adapt a bit more uh, our conversation. So Cosmos, um, thank you again. Thank you for the cooperation of NACAC and uh, the panel uh, will be yours, okay? Ricardo, so thank you. We appreciate the opportunity. This is a great way to, especially during these times, to uh, keep people in the know. Okay, so I'm going to introduce Joey Lombardi and also Jay Bindi in this conversation. We'll be discussing the best way to attack possession or counterattack. Cosmos, see you in 45 minutes. See you then. Here, Ricardo. Gentlemen, thank you for joining us. First and foremost, I hope you and your families are all well and uh, that uh, we take care of what needs to be taken care of in terms of priority over this difficult time. And hopefully it passes, we can be back on the training pitches as soon as possible. Folks, I'd like to introduce uh, our two panelists. Uh, I'll go to my notes here first. Uh, Jay, you've been stuck with me before. And uh, Jay, let me pull up your bio here, is a former uh, Ottawa FC Fury Academy coach uh, in a whole bunch of ages, uh, first team analyst, and uh, currently the Ottawa South United League uh, uh, Ontario staff coach, uh, also currently works with the Austin Bold FC as their uh, analyst and opposition scout and has had coaching internships all over the place. FC Porto, Academica, Fenerbahce, Besiktas, Torre de Setubal, and Mania Sport. Uh, also has a coaching experience in terms of licensing with the FAW and is a UEFA B candidate. Joey, who hasn't been stuck with us before, uh, although we've met uh, several times and the last time was several years ago, uh, has a storied history working with the Rex programs, um, worked with Ontario Soccer and Canada Rex programs for the male to female sides and prior to his uh, current role with Brampton uh, as the Director of Coaching and uh, Player Development. Joey, did I get that right? I was, uh, yeah, I'm currently Director of Player and Coach Development for Brampton, Brampton FC. FC. Okay, and then, uh, then he was with uh, Canada Men's Soccer Program and he's Director of um, Pardon me, he also holds a Canadian A and a USSFA or USAA, depending on how you frame it now. So we're dealing with loads of experience, guys. So we're, we're counting on you to let us know uh, what your experience tells us in different situations. And our topic today is the best way to attack possession or counterattack. Obviously, it's a loaded question, and it's meant to be that way because people oftentimes think, well, it's one or the other. Others will say it's both. Uh, some of the things that I'd like us to start off with, and I'll start off with this question, and gentlemen, jump in and I'll start the first one with Joey and then Jay, please uh, respond as well. What are the most effective tactics that make counterattacking a useful approach to scoring goals? So Joey, we'll start with you if you would, please. I think, um, I think you can't separate counterattack from the defensive organization. I think that's a big piece. So how you defend will then springboard your, your counterattack. So I feel like if you want to um, vacate space in the opponent's half, defending in a low block, will force the opponent to attack at a higher point on the pitch, which then, once you've won the ball, and, and the aim in, a, in a, a medium to low block is to try to win the ball back in the middle third. And then from that, that point of view, you then have space in the opponent's half. 
you probably want to have your your front three in positions where they can already trigger your counter attack. And I always like to have um, a designated link player, probably my my attacking midfielder, that I want to find as my first point in the transition to then springboard my my counter attack. So I say how you sit up in your defensive shape, uh, probably a, a medium blocks in an effective way to then allow you once you've won the ball in the middle third to have space in the opponent's half. Uh, to find your link player and then find your 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 next phase of transition in behind the back line of the opponent. Super, Jay. Any thoughts to add? And based on what you you consistently look at film, uh, do you find that there's anything different in the conversation you would like to add, or anything that you would would say based on your experience with certain opponents that you've uh, coached against over the course of the last several years? No, I think uh, Joey made a lot of good points that that I would have said to if. Uh... If I went first, so I, I agree with a lot of the points he said. I think it's super important to, um, to have that, like Joey said, inside your defensive organization. Um, I, I like to think of you always have in the back of your mind attacking when you defend and vice versa. So inside your defensive organization, you do have that player for reference, your, your counter reference. And usually sometimes it's a number nine. It could be a number 10, like Joey said, that you most often than not look for in that uh, in that transition moment to counter um one thing that I, i've noticed that we look at trends trends a lot especially in in the north american game and i think joey can relate as well working with the national team is trends in our part of the world um a lot of similarities in areas to to exploited counter and i find in the usl and even watching in the mls um most often than not those are in the wide areas uh, because it's a trend for teams to play with attacking fullbacks and fullbacks push up high. So you do have that area to exploit uh, going that transition moment to counter um, using those wide areas. Thank you for watching this short preview video from the National Soccer Coaches Association of Canada. To see the full video, plus have access to hundreds of other coaching videos, blogs, webinars and podcasts, plus free and discounted coach education courses and other soccer merchandise, plus to have exclusive access to register for all future NSCAC conventions, both live and online, click on the link below to become a member of the NSCAC today. Also, please remember to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel as your continued support allows us to continue to provide coach education and coach development resources to soccer coaches across Canada and worldwide. Thank you again for your continued support and we look forward to seeing you at future NSCAC events.